Carter Medical Center, working together for the love of kids, are proud to present this Action News for Kids special, Gotta Get a Drum. I wonder, can I get a roll off? in the middle of the tone sits the drummer in the middle like a king on a throne with a hi-hat, a tom-tom, a bass drum beat and a lot of weird stuff that's really neat the drummer drives the band, drives the band, drives the band still he keeps it steady with a clockwork hand every little kid always wants to play the drum Gotta get a drum, 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 gotta get a drum. Hi, I'm Jessica Annisberger. Like kids all over the country and kids all over the world, I always wanted to learn to play the drums. But they told me I should play the flute. And the flute's all right, but it's not a drum. So I never really learned to play the drums. But on this special, Gotta Get a Drum, you'll see what people from India do with drums. And people from the Caribbean. And people from Central Pennsylvania. And people who play in a symphony. We'll be back with the beat and lots more right after this. If you're going to be a drummer, you're probably going to have to know what a paradiddle is. Those were paradiddles, but here's a drag paradiddle. And how about a triple rat a cue? Here's one of my personal favorites, Swiss Army triplets. Those are what's known as rudiments. Drummers in the American Revolutionary War over 200 years ago drummed those same patterns. And in the Civil War, too. Put them together and what do you get? This! is an eighth grader at Keith Junior High. Dave, why did you start playing the drums? Because I thought it would be easy compared to saxophone and all that. It's turned out to be pretty hard because of all the different rhythms and all the different notes, even on timpanis and stuff like that. What's the best part about playing the drums? Uh, all the different drums. There's the snare drum, bass drum, cymbals, timpanis, and all that. And they're all, they're all different and they're all fun. Of course, not everybody wants to march through life. Some people want a polka. I started listening to uh, records when I was four or five years old. We, we always had polkas on for uh, supper meals, and they were on like at lunchtime. Every Christmas for about seven, eight years, I always got a drum. And it was a toy drum, and I always ended up breaking it until finally one Christmas, my mother smartened up. She bought me something a little bit better, and I never broke it. So I had one that lasted, you know. It's most important to Keep the correct time, don't speed up, don't, you know, don't slow down. That way, even the people will tell you, if you're not playing right, they'll say, you're playing too slow, they can't dance to you. The bass drum is uh, on the downbeat, and then the snare and the cymbals do the, uh, the upbeat stuff. But the bass drum is basic, the basic beat in the polka that keeps the basic time in the polka. 
You're right on the beat and everything. It's going to make the rest of the music all come together. It's going to be one product coming out then. Yeah, I get tired. I sweat a lot. But what you have to do is try to pace yourself. There are certain songs that I really get into that I really like a lot. And I found that I was tending to go all out on those songs. So now I try to stay at a steady pace the whole job. That way I won't get tired. the cadence for a marching band or drums beating out the rhythm for people who love to polka. Those are things we're used to. But what about this? <laughs> Some people are familiar with that sound, and we'll find out who they are and what kind of drumming that is right after this break. American who studied drumming, percussion, in Boston, and then became so interested in the music of India, he went there to study. Learning music in India is very different than studying music in America, I think. Um, for one thing, there's no written music. Um, and that's something that takes a while to get used to, because all the poetry that you've heard on the tabla, you have to remember the poetry, and that's how the music is passed from generation to generation to generation, and from teacher to disciple, or from teacher to student. So you walk in for your drum lesson, and the teacher says, good morning, today's lesson is and he says, play it. So you sit down and you play what he recites. On the right hand drum, there's a number of different sounds. Na, ta, tita, din, trakka, dhir. On the left hand drum, there's ka, and ga. One of the main differences between Indian music and some of the music you may be listening to here in America is that Indian rhythmic cycles, first of all, are in circles. Drummers think of rhythms in circles. So there are circles of poetry that go with the circles of rhythm that you play on a tabla. For example, six beat rhythmic cycle on the tabla. Da dina da tina one two three four five six da tina da tina da tina da tina da tina da tina The other thing that really was difficult in learning the tabla compared to playing snare drum or some other drums like the drum set is just the technique that's involved on the drums themselves. Um, unlike a drum that you just strike with a stick or if you just hit, the sound comes out. On the tabla, the drum doesn't even sound until you get the appropriate, the appropriate touch. So these drums are much more like a flute in that your hand has to have an embouchure, almost like your lips for the flute, and you have to touch the drum appropriately, and then the sound comes out. In tabla drumming, then, you create compositions with the sounds that we can make. And you fit it inside one of the rhythm cycles that I showed you. For example, a 16-beat rhythm cycle. are much more complicated than we're used to. It's not the regular one, two, three, four. And that's another thing. When you go to an Indian concert, you'll often see people in the audience clapping as they listen to the music. And there's a very specific way to clap the rhythm cycles as they go by. For example, a six-beat rhythm cycle. Da dina, da dina, da dina, da dina. Clap like 
this on the first beat, and when the halfway point comes in the cycle, you turn your hand over and clap like this. The rhythm isn't the only neat thing about that drumming. He's playing different notes all the time. But if we're going to talk about melody, let's talk to a symphony percussionist. Andy Reamer plays with the Pittsburgh Symphony. About third or fourth grade, I started to take lessons from my father, who was an amateur player. And I started on snare drum. And uh, eventually, as I went through school, I branched out into the other areas of percussion, drum set, and all the mallet instruments and timpani. This percussion instrument is a marimba. It's set up also like a piano. These are the black notes on the piano, and these will be the white notes all the way down here. These bars are wooden bars. They're made of rosewood, and they're tuned to the different pitches by cutting them to different lengths and also shaving them out underneath. The tubes on the front and also under the keys back here are called resonators. And they just act to amplify the sound. If I played this marimba without these tubes on the instrument, it wouldn't be very loud at all. What I'd like to play for you now is a chorale by Franz Schubert. My father was, uh, you know, a drummer, um, and it's something I just connected with very early on. I, I really enjoyed watching drummers, and um, uh, I liked all the percussion instruments, and I've always had a real fascination with sounds and, and different sound colors and the, all the different things that percussionists get to play. This is a xylophone. This is the instrument that we usually play in the Pittsburgh Symphony. We don't often play the marimba there. You can see that the bars are different. They're more narrow, they're a little bit thicker, and it has a, a much different sound from the marimba. It's a shorter and drier and kind of a harder sound. Also, the resonators, the tubes underneath, are smaller and not as long. This is a, uh, an excerpt from the opera Porgy and Bess, written by George Gershwin. This percussion instrument is called a vibraphone, or vibes sometime for short. It's also set up like the other mallet keyboard instruments, only the bars are made of metal. And there's two interesting things about this instrument. Uh, when I strike these metal bars, they would ring for a very long time. But I can cut off that ringing with a damper pad, which runs underneath all the bars, and that's controlled by my foot. The other interesting thing about this instrument, it, it has fans at the top of all the resonators, which actually stop and release the flow of air in the resonators. And I can control that. I can turn them on uh, with a switch over here. And they give the vibraphone its characteristic wah-wah sound.
Hindi drumming is pretty formal, and so is Indian drumming. So next, we're going to loosen up with some steel drumming. Right after this. This next part may be difficult to watch if you're sitting down. Most drumming makes you want to get up and dance, but steel drumming gets you up and moves you around. Let's say that you're 8 years old, or 11, or 14, or 16. And let's say that your father is one of the best steel drum makers and players in the country. How would you like that? Watch. So what is a steel drum? Well, a steel drum is an instrument that's made from the bottom of a 55-gallon steel barrel. You know, like the garbage cans, those big steel barrels. We use the bottom of that garbage can, and we use hammers, punch, chisel, all tools like blacksmith would work with. How do you actually determine the pitch on a steel drum? Well, the steel drum pitches are determined by the size of each mark. Like, for instance, on the larger yeah. section, if you could see this here, we make uh, marks with a punch, and we have a large section that gives you a lower sound, and the smaller section is going to give you the higher sound. So the lower and the higher. So we have on this about 30 different sections marked off, and each section is a different size. There's no two with the same size. So we could have like C and C sharp, D and D sharp, B flat, a, G, we have all notes, like just like a piano or keyboard. What led to steel drums? Steel drums is something that <coughs> just kind of evolved. And it evolved off of uh, people in the Caribbean playing tin cans, bamboo, uh, a matter of fact, anything they can find to make music, bottles, spoons, whatever. How did your daughters learn to play the drums? My daughters never really wanted to play steel drums. They never seemed interested in playing steel drums. So I decided, that, well, that's, if th that's fine, because they're girls, they're not boys, so if they don't want to play steel drum, that's fine. And. Uh, that happened for years. Then suddenly, one of my daughters says, Daddy, could I have a steel drum? I said, sure. So I made her a steel drum. And that was the little one. She was about six years old. And she started playing the steel drum. Apparently, the one before her got jealous. <laughs> she said, could she have a steel drum? And I said, OK. And it went like that. Eventually, each one of them asked for a steel drum. Uh, what I did in terms of teaching them to play. I never teach them to play. Since they wanted a steel drum, they had to learn to play by themselves. So I kind of make them learn just like the way I learn. You listen to a tape, you listen to the, the CD, you listen to a record, uh, you get a piece of music sheet, whatever, and, uh, and you learn. holds for steel drums? Uh, when steel drums started, it seems like there was no future. As a matter of fact, no mother wanted their son to play steel drums. Even my mom, she was totally against me playing steel drums. She said, you should go learn a trade or something. And uh, most moms didn't want their sons to play steel drums. We have seen 40 years after that they were wrong. And I'm sure another century from now, they will still be wrong.
out to be more than just rhythm instruments. They play melodies and rhythms in places all over the world, in countries like Africa, in Bali, in South America, in the Middle East, and in Japan. Through the music of the drums, it's fun and it's easy to learn about other people in other countries. For the drums we've heard today, we need to thank the Keith Junior High School drum line in Altoona. Ray J and the Carousel. Jim Despirito. Andy Reamer. Fayuna, Janera, Lee, Jeanette, and Phil Solomon. Thanks for being with us today on Gotta Get a Drum. There's just one more thing to say. Yada da 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 da.